Hi, welcome to Kid Design's tutorial on Autodesk Tinkercad. Today we'll look at how do you use the group tool and the whole tool to make your own shapes. Now you can do it in very interesting ways and create bespoke shapes with that. Now as I mentioned in Tinkercad, um, the way you create your own shapes is by combining uh, the basic shapes and you can combine them in two ways. You either literally join them uh, to create a new shape or the other version is where you use holes to uh, carve out parts of your shape. So let's look at grouping first. If you have two objects such as uh, a box and a cylinder that are overlapping and let's say I want to uh, turn these two into one you can see here when you when you rotate that it's flickering um, that means that they're basically exactly um, overlapping on that surface so that's that's good in this case so I basically need to select both of them and group them and when I group them they'll change color so that's a good sign which means it's joined them into one object so now if I move it around it's uh, acting as one solid. Now if I double click on it, I go into uh, the object and I can um, actually change the shape. So let's say I can make this one lower and if I double click outside of it again we'll go back to uh, having them grouped. So that's quite useful. You kind of go into it to modify it then you move out and you, you're back in the, the single uh, object mode. Now the other thing you can do is if you actually want to keep the two different colors either for aesthetic purposes or if you want to keep it in two different colors so that you can uh, see which shapes it's made of you can do that by clicking on it and by clicking on the color and then selecting the multicolor option. That will bring back the original colors that you used and uh, which you can still change actually if you click on the cylinder you can make that green uh, or whatever. But then once you're out of that, you double click anywhere in the empty space, uh, you'll see it's still acting as one object, it's just displayed differently. Okay, so that's the basic way of joining two shapes together to create a new shape. Now, if you want to do um, the opposite, where you use the whole option, you do it in a very similar way. Now let's delete this one, so I can show you this option. Let's, let's take a box, just a simple default box, and let's say we want to make, let's use the cylinder again. Let's place it somewhere here, so it's uh, the middle of the cylinder is in the um, corner of the box. Now, what I can do is instead of making this cylinder a solid and choosing its color, I simply need to switch here in this pop-up menu um, I need to switch to it being a hole. As soon as I click that it becomes it gives it this semi-transparent shaded view and then if I click anywhere else it kind of stays there as this mysterious gray shape which is not much use to me actually and it might be a bit confusing initially but the only thing you need to remember is that in order for it to actually carve out of this box you need to select both of them and group them the same way we did with joining them. So once they're grouped the whole disappears and actually um, acts as a carving tool and it carves out that shape out of this box and you can't see it anymore obviously. But same as we did with the grouping you double click on this shape, you go inside it, and you can modify, you can move this hole, and you click out, and you've already changed it, very simple. So that hole still kind of, that shape, that cylinder, exists, but it's invisible. It's, it's acts as a carving tool now, more than uh, as an object. So that's a very good way of making your own uh, shapes and um, you can really go to 
more sophisticated levels where you want to create your own shapes uh, and use that that option. Now, if you want to, for example, create a um, a hollow object, the quickest way to do that is let's say we want to create something that looks like a, a glass or a cup. Let's make a cylinder. Now. You can do it by making another cylinder or you can duplicate this one. So let's click on the regular cylinder that we have and we click Command D or Control D to duplicate that and then we want to scale it down. Now scaling, you, as you remember, you need to drag these corners. If you drag one of them, it will scale it irregularly like this. That could be quite tricky. So you need to hold Shift and it will sh scale it proportionally up and down. If you hold Shift and Alt, it will scale it, but from the center in and out. So let's just scale it down a bit. We can't see it because it's actually inside it. But if we drag this, now it's appeared. So we've basically created a smaller cylinder within a bigger one. And what we can do is we click on the smaller one, we turn that into a hole, we select the two of them, and we group them. And now we've got this cup-like object. If you want to make it even more like a cup, you can go in and you can start modifying the, the big shape that you want to keep. So you can make add a bevel to it, for example. Add segments, increase the number of sides, exit again, and you see it has made it smoother. And you can so you can basically change that. You can even change its size. Let's say, oh, I want thicker edges. If you want thicker edges, you can do it two ways. You would either increase the size of the outside bit of the outside cylinder or you would decrease the size of the inner cylinder. But you have to remember that you might need to lift it up again so that it appears on top of the surface. So you see now we've made uh, the, the sides thicker. Now one thing that um, people often ask is how do you make rounded edges on your shapes if you don't want to round everything up but just maybe one corner. I'll show you what I mean. So if we delete these two, let's say we've created a box that has this kind of shape and now we want to, to just round um, just, just these edges. We want to make like a, a, a plaque, some kind of sign board. How do we do that? If you click on the shape and you change the radius, it will start making start changing the radius of the whole thing, which is not what we want. So you have to make a new shape with which you're going to carve out that. So you would make a box, you would add a cylinder, Um, you can make the cylinder a bit smaller, perhaps. And let's make this box also lower, so let's make it 10 millimeters. So what we need to do is basically we need to create a tool with which we, we're going to cut out these corners on the, on the, on the main, uh, let's make it blue, on the main blue shape. So the red shape is essentially going to be our tool. So we need to make the cylinder into a hole. We need to group these two together. And then we need to move this in place where we want to use it for cutting. Just to be safe, um, I will move this one down a little bit just so that it covers the whole entire um, blue shape.
Now, obviously, we want to do it in the four corners, so we need to duplicate this one. So I'm going to click Control D, move it. I need to rotate it. Oops, wrong, wrong direction. Rotate it by 90 degrees, move it into the corner. So I'm ready for the two corners, and then I need to do the other two. I can select these two together, click Control D, move them, and then instead of rotating them, I'm going to show you another trick, which is flipping. You've got this thing that looks like a, a mirror. If you click that, it will allow you to flip your object in uh, any direction. So we want to flip it in this direction. Bam. Simple. So now, you see what I've done there? You flip this way, but it's symmetrical, so it won't change anything. But if you flip between this and this, it basically reflects it. So we've got these four shapes, and we now need to turn them into holes. So we select the red corner bit, we make them into holes. We select all of these, including the blue bit. We click group, does the operation, and here we are. So this is a kind of a two-layered way of doing it. So we've first created uh, groups between the little cylinder and the box to create the tool. Then we've duplicated it around here, and we make um, the rounded corners that way. Now, I can still go in to it if I double click it see those tools are still here so in case I need to let's say change the size of this I want to make it smaller I can still do that let's say I want to make it 50 and I just need to make sure I move the holes as well like that and here we are all right so that's a way of starting to create your own shapes. Now one other thing I want to show you is how would you split an object. Let's say we've got a nice um, star and we want to split this star let's make it let's make it eight points so that it's symmetrical in all way in all directions and we want to split it down the middle. How would we do that? Again very simply we need to create Holes. So we're going to create a box that's big enough to cover the sides. And we're going to move that box right to the middle of our star. Right? You can see that it's, it goes right along the middle of the star. And if I make this into a hole, it will cut away this part. But we want to keep it, we don't want to get rid of it. So what we need to do is we need to make a duplicate. So I'm going to go a step back and I'm going to make a duplicate of the star. So I'm going to just click Command D and keep it there. So now we've got two of those stars there. And now I want to copy this one. I'm going to do command C, command B, and put it right so that they're next to each other, very precisely. Okay? So we've got the two stars, you can see them there, and these two boxes. So what we need to do is we need to make these two into holes. And then we need to select one of the stars and one of the boxes. So how do we do that? It could seem a bit tricky because the star is inside. Well, one useful thing about Tinkercad is that you can go inside an object. If you zoom far enough, you see, ah, we're now inside that hole. We can select one of the stars, just click once, zoom back out, 
select one of the holes and group them. And now we're, we're left with another star and another hole and we group them. So what do we have? We have one star, but split into two. Because if you double click and go into it, you will see that actually it's two stars and two boxes, but they're grouped in such a way that um, they're split, basically. You just double click again, you see that's the one star and the one box, and this is the other one. So now, through these few tips and tricks, you saw how you can make groups to combine objects, make groups with holes, to again make new objects with carved out bits, but also how do you use um, your own shapes to create your own bespoke shapes by carving them uh, out and also split objects. Thanks for watching this tutorial and we have one more coming up about duplicating and making patterns in Tinkercad, so please keep watching. Thank you.